package that Nigeria has announced, would, how do you believe or how would it affect our economy? Would it bring about an economic system that is respectful of nature or would it be one that, that seeks to commodify nature, to make nature something you put on the market shelf? How would it help us to build a truly green economy? Thank you, Nemo. Um, let me also go back to the question that you were asking, Larry, about net zero. Uh, I think you're, you're very correct in your um, articulation of net zero, meaning that there has to be some sort of trade-off. Uh, trade-off between who is polluting more versus who's polluting less. Um, and I know that that's where a lot of activists tend to have issues with the conversations or the nomenclature around net zero and the framing of decarbonization right now. So you're correct in that. But when you look at the, the Nigerian uh, just transition plan, energy transition plan, sorry, it is a very ambitious plan. Um, and it is right to be ambitious because what you said earlier about this energy transition happening anyway is already happening. So it is important that Nigeria is a part of that conversation even today. Um, the targets that they have set, I think when we look at the range of targets from other countries are very realistic um, because even wealthier countries and countries that have everything it takes to, to achieve net zero today are setting these sort of targets, um, saying that they need time to transition both their people and their economy to something that is much more sustainable. So for those of us in countries that are still developing and don't have all of those infrastructure, there is a case to be made that we need time also to transition. But then the question that you're asking about what the benefits are for us, here is how I'll frame it, even though I don't work for the government, it's the, it's the fact that we have a comparative advantage um, in the fact that we, st we still have a struggling electricity system. And if we had to just take a sort of, uh, we have to take a sort of, you know, uh, poll here to ask people, how many people even get up to three hours of electricity from the grid? How many people, I just want to see hands up. Do you get up to three? No, everybody says no. Oh, some people, please, we have to find out where those people live so that we can, we can go see whether we will find houses there. But that, that, this is just to say, somebody said Kubwa, okay. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, thank you. Okay, so the, the point is really that our electricity, um, the average of, uh, our average electricity consumption as Nigerians, as everyday Nigerians, are very low. And most times we're, we're subsidizing or, you know, um, getting most of our electricity through generators, diesel generators or petrol generators there, I better pass my, my neighbor generator. So we, we don't have enough electricity as it is. What this energy transition plan now does for us is to help us accelerate to a time where we can be able to get as much electricity as everybody else who's also going to be transitioning at the same time. Nigeria already is revolutionizing in, in terms of um, renewable energy. We have a mini grid regulation. We have mini grid, um, we have solar home system plants. Um, we have the Solar Niger program. You know, they have a lot of programs that they're rolling out. The reason is because they want, they know that decentralized renewable energy is a way to get villages and communities electrified as quickly as possible without necessarily waiting for the antiquated grid that we have now to get to people. And so this is important for us when we're talking about the energy transition plan because it's going to maybe help with equalizing our energy access for millions of people who live in rural communities and peri-urban communities that do not have electricity today. So that's one advantage. The other advantage that I think this has is that it's also preparing our young people, and it's really great, like His Royal Majesty said when he looked across the room and said that there are lots of young people here. It, it is really great that young people are engaging on issues of climate because it's the, the f their future. Um, but this future, there's going to be a green economy or a green future that is emerging. Do we have the human capital currently to part of that green, green future? The answer is no. So what, again, this plan might do for us is to begin to prepare young people 
to begin to think about um, technical knowledge in issues around you know, climate resilience, climate adaptation, climate technologies, things that we're not actually very strong in now. So this, that's the other um, advantage that I see that this plan brings forth. I'm happy to talk about others, but I'll cede the mic back to you, Nemo. Thank you so much, Ifoma, for that very, yes, it's okay to clap, yes. Very clear and very hopeful response. Uh, that is helpful to some of us who have a lot of doubts. So thank you for giving us reason to hope. 